Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to share a recipe with you on my technique of how I can pull pork. Where most people use what's called a pork butt, which is actually the shoulder of a pig, um, I like to use pork loin. Pork loin is a lot leaner, has a lot less fat, and it's also easy to cut the fat off of it. So we're going to cut our pork loin in one and a half, two inch chunks. Take our knife or scissors, whatever you prefer to use, and cut all the fat that you can see off the pork. Then we're going to put a dry rub mixture on it. This dry rub mixture is a tablespoon of salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, two tablespoons of brown sugar. Uh, I will <coughs> excuse me, have this uh, recipe for the dry rub mixture in the comments below. We're going to coat our pork loin in the dry rub mixture. You either need to let it set on the meat for 30 minutes to an hour. I actually seasoned mine last night and put it in a gallon Ziploc bag and let the mixture set on the meat overnight. Uh, this allows the flavors to really stick to the meat and marinate the meat to get the flavoring in it. Uh, but just an hour of it drying on the meat will be good enough. We're going to take our big skillet. We're going to add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And we're going to brown every part of the outside of this meat that we can on top of the stove. So we're going to put our burner on high. We're going to add our meat to the skillet. Get our tongs out and be ready to turn the meat and brown it. It'll take probably three to four minutes per each side to get this meat brown right to go in the oven. As you can see, I coated the meat very well uh, in the rub mixture. It makes what you think is a lot, but once you put it on there, you're really not wasting a whole lot even after you take it out of the bag. But you can leave it on the cutting board and just leave it coated and let it sit out for about an hour. Again, we've got our skillet on high, a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and you can use vegetable oil, is fine. And we're going to brown every part of this meat that we can. This is going to totally change the taste if you do not brown your meat before you can it it's going to taste like it's been boiled on top of the stove and i don't care for boiled meat this will actually take like taste like you wrapped it in foil and and cooked in the oven or you cook it in a pressure cooker or on a slow cooker all day this doesn't take very long what you're going to do also is Start placing in your jars, and if you need to cut up some of these chunks to get it to fit in your jars, you're going to brown that part of the meat also. So what I've done is I've got my jars cleaned and ready, and I've started placing the meat in the jars and cutting it up to where it will fit. This isn't a canning video. It's on my technique on how I do pulled pork. So we're going to put lids and rings on like you normally would, finger tight, but we're going to pressure can this for 90 minutes. I had a pint four 24 ounce jars and a quart, but I still pressure canned them all for 90 minutes. I will list also my recipe on what I add to my pulled pork when I take it out. Uh, you can also do pork chops this way with just salt and pepper, place them in jars, pressure can them, then all you gotta do is take it out and either put them in like some cream of mushroom soup gravy, something like that, or Add barbecue sauce to the top of them and put them in the oven. Hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you have any questions, list them in the comments. If you haven't joined our channel, do so by clicking on the notifications bell. So you'll also get notifications of any new videos that I put out. Hope you have a great day. This is the Pressure Prepper, and I'm out.